think we did three hours for the network and then two hours streaming right after the network show. So it was five hours of like straight live TV. I imagine it's a pretty difficult job to do. You, know, you can't get up and go to the bathroom, so. <laughs> As a woman in film, I want young girls to know. The first show was more like a pre-Oscar fun look back at all the great films and the nominees. And then the last half of the show, the carpet opens. And that's when people started showing up. I mean, like the last hours, you're just on the fly. They'll say, we have this celebrity or director. You're also trying to hit your commercial breaks. Uh, you can roll on things while you're in a commercial break. So you can like shoot something and then roll it back as if you were live. A lot of shows do that on the red carpet. I mean, red carpet shows are mainly what we call like pre-banked shots. So when the show starts and you're seeing the beautiful like shots of you know, Steven Spielberg walking down, and it seems like, wow, they're getting this all live. Most of the time that was actually pre-taped moments before. And then there's an editor who's quickly on an EVS machine putting a clip reel together. And then you as a director are just rolling the machine back as if it was live cameras shooting. So some it's, it, it is live, but some of it's like, you could be using your live cameras or you could be using cameras that caught the shot and we rolled it back as if it was live. There's a lot of that in general on red carpet shows. It's almost like how sports are done, like the replays. Like someone scores a goal and you kind of quickly recue it. And so you play it back, except you never saw the goal scored live, but now you're seeing it on tape, if that makes sense. We were not, in LA physically. I was actually back in New York. Yeah, I mean, these days, you know, you don't have to be out in a truck. Of course, it's a little better. You can walk out and see your talent before you start. You know, you can get a better feel of what you're dealing with. But this was basically all the cameras coming back to New York where they shoot World News Tonight. And we were in a control room in New York, but our producers were on the ground. So, you know, our producers and our tech crew were there and you would talk to them uh, from there. But I was physically in New York. So that was interesting. So how do you decide in the moment what you're going to do? I mean, how much input do you have on, okay, it's commercial, now we're coming back, what should we come in on? Like, do you make that decision? Yeah, yeah. The As the director, you know, especially with good producers, they'll allow you to come in any way you want. Like show, just show beauty shots, show exteriors, show people at the step and repeat. So that's just all you and your, your camera folks getting you in and out of break. What the producers mainly are doing is, they're just lining up those, what are we going to first? Who's our first interview? Who do we have next? There's bookers on the red carpet that are physically maybe pre-book them and talk to their agents and managers. Others, it's literally like, just just grab them. Like, just tell your host to grab somebody. Um, so it's a real, <laughs> it's like the Wild West with the red carpet or the champagne carpet. <laughs> oh, my God. Were there any moments where like you expected something to happen, like you thought a celebrity was going to come over and then all of a sudden they got involved in something else or their publicist or someone said, no, we can't do that? Or, like, any um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it happened. It happened all day. Um, I think like you were expecting to get, you know, certain people and then they wouldn't show up at a certain time, but it's like a red carpet. So it's so hard. It's so hard to control it. So I think we always say the best stuff actually happens or the, the unplanned things. It's when you're doing an interview and then you know, um, Joe Pesci comes around and, and breaks up the interview. And those those are the best moments where they're truly uh, on the fly, you know, real, unscripted. So we, we don't put a lot of pressure on ourselves for those live, live shows where you don't know where you're going. You just want to be prepared. Um, you want to be ready. Uh, if great camera people that can find uh, great shots of people walking around. Uh, and then, yeah, great talent who really is you become your own booker you know you're just grabbing who you want or you'll go run down to go get somebody and bring them over to your to your station it's very tight on a red carpet there's not a lot of room you get about we i mean we were an abc show so we got you know a 10 by 10 space for our main hosts we had one main area with uh, one or two cameras and then we had the step and repeat where you first walk in where all the press are and then the audience and it's literally you know, I had two hosts standing side by side um, with a microphone and camera. And there's like 30 stations like that from around the world. So it's very, it's very tight. It's very tight. It's not the, so good, though, that you can sort of see who's coming by because there's only one way to pass. OK, OK. So there's a little bit of control in that respect. Yeah. yeah. And um, then we had and then technically we had I had about four robotic cameras overhead, uh, one on the step and the repeat 
one on the, uh, we call it the elbow, which is the end of the red carpet. So when you walk the carpet, you hit the elbow and you make your final turn as you head into the theater. That's where our main station was as you made the final turn. Uh, so that came in handy because when we were about to go off the air, we finally got, um, yeah, I think our best guests um, um, from the, you know, the biggest movies that won that night. Like we got like, you know, the directors and, and all the actors of, of, the, of the films that, you know, actually won. We did have Brendan Fraser. We were hoping to talk to him and we, we actually got him and he was, uh, it was amazing. You know, he, he was always emotional, like before the Oscars, like at the awards when he won and then when he did actually win, uh, he's just so genuine. And uh, that was the one interview we never cut away or did anything. We just stayed on him. And then the camera people, you know, when you have a good camera person, when you don't even have to tell them to, you know, because it was one camera in this area. We, it's like one key story. He was getting emotional right away. And he just pushed really in tight. Uh, he even started, you know, crying a little bit. So, you know, you if you work with people with great instincts, sometimes you just have to sit there and just watch. And you don't have to overdo it. You don't have to overcut, overdirect. But then there are times when there's a lull, you want to put some different things out there. You want to get beautiful shots and arrivals and and do the best you can to keep the viewers there and um, you know keep your bosses happy with the numbers at the end of the day. Right. Is there like a different entrance or exit for bigger celebrities or is it all kind of people? No, they all go, they all go through. Yeah. I mean, because there's when you get when you arrive at the red carpet, it's covered now, the arrival area. There's like security there. Um, everybody that's on that red carpet is obviously not just credential, but like, I mean, they, they go through, it's like probably going through like the CIA, you're, you're giving a lot of information to get on the carpet, um, you know, special credentials. You can't really leave the carpet, even like there's only one area to go to the bathroom for people. So you don't leave the immediate area. Uh, so it's very tight, but yeah, it's only one way in. It's not like. I have a big celebrity. I'm going to go in the back door. Everyone walks that red carpet. I think they want to, too. I mean, come on. Yeah. 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 My only experience of red carpet was um, years ago. I did a few red carpets where I was the producer for Entertainment Tonight. So I was not the, on camera, but I was holding the microphone and asking the questions. Um, the first time I did it, I had like all these great questions that I wanted to ask, like specific questions, questions about the, the actor, about the location. And, um, you know, some actors just, they don't respond to that. They just want to, you know, they want you to ask, how are you feeling tonight? You know, so I imagine like you have to really be able to listen to what's going on in the interview because you can anticipate whether it's going to go on or whether it's just going to get cut short. Oh. Yeah, I mean, my 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 world of directing, again, is a little more unscripted. I mean, I can do scripted, I think, very well, because um, you know what's going to happen next. And, you know, you know where your cameras need to shoot exactly. But in the unscripted world, there's, you know, going going off question or just ad-libbing what they want to say. So I think you, you have your greatest chance to present to viewers um, a nice way of sort of um, moving through the interviews is just to have different things cued, whether it's video from the film or some pictures. We also do like picture in picture and we box the live interview and then we're showing the film on the other side or we're showing some behind the scenes footage. It's all that storytelling visually that's important because, you know, you have to remember a lot of times you could be at a Oscar viewing party and it's you're in a room where there's music. And you're not hearing what they're saying. So actually, it becomes more important to present, you know, the visual, because a lot of people do watch TV with the volume off half the time. So, I, you know, I think that's a big part of it, uh, especially now when you watch shows, everybody's very uh, mindful of we have to visually sell like what's happening so that just just always pretend that you're directing something nobody can hear. And so if you think about it that way, you know, red carpet interviews, while they're obviously really interesting and the celebrities are there. A lot of times we're always doing side by sides with them. Um, now, if you get like the, you know, the person of the night and the, you know, the, the best actors and stuff, you don't really want to cut away from that too much because that in itself is, uh, you know, that's what you're there for to talk to them. Um, and those are your big, those are your big gets. You know, there's like always moments where you're watching and if you're tuned to it, you're like, oh yeah, this is a live show. Like you see a little bit of an elbow or you know, like somebody steps into a frame. I mean, do you remember any of those moments? That, that actually does happen a lot. Like you're, you're coming back from break and um, 
you know, the producers run in to go give notes and stuff. And, you know, we're counting back and the producers are still huddled around. We're like, we're down to five, four, three. And then they start scare scaring away. And there's still one producer sitting there just not knowing where to go. And it, it just, and it looked like a mistake too. Cause like, then like she like realized and ran off where I was like, oh, just stand there. It's fine. Uh, and, but you know, you are, you are standing next to other productions. So we were catching a lot of people shooting, but that's all a part of it. We, you know, it's, it's not going to be clean. Things that do happen, prompter went down a couple times and the talent's like reading. And then if you're really closely watching, you can kind of tell that they're, they can tell that it's not rolling anymore. And then they start trying to figure out where they are to go. You only ad lib like the interviews, but the ins and outs are always scripted. So if that prompter goes down, it does throw uh, some talent, but our talent were great on the, they didn't really miss a beat, but you know, those things happen all the time and you get in their ear and just be like, go, go, go. Or wow. you know, just throw, throw, you know, throw, throw to the pack. You try to remind them the package they're throwing to or something. Did you ever like lose your composure? When the room is just getting loud or talking, um, it's like that left ear, right ear. I mean, I'm always, you're listening to three different things. You know, I have ADs that are counting me. I have um, a stage manager asking a question while I'm still directing someone in the back row. And so, you know, as a, as a director, you're, you're multitasking your listening skills. You have to be able to listen to the show while it's happening and react to it, you know, give your cues and just focus. I just tell people, look, sometimes it's not perfect. I mean, live TV can get messy, but if you have, um, if you have all your fallbacks in place, you know, where, where can I go if a, a tape doesn't roll or it freezes, you know, I'm just going to cut back here to the talent. And I think if you just go in with a good solid plan and you let your crew know that you have their back, uh, you'll you'll do you'll you'll come out just fine.